All right, buckle up because today's deep dive is going to be a, a wild ride. Um, we're about to uncover a link you'd never expect between being a dungeon master and get this a UX designer. Yeah, you know, you might be surprised how many skills actually transfer between crafting those epic quests and designing like really intuitive apps. It does sound like we're stretching things a bit, right? It does a bit. But thankfully, we've got this seriously fascinating article by Jonathan Hobson to guide us. He's an AI analyst. Okay. But also a super experienced dungeon master himself. Yeah. So he really knows his stuff. And honestly, he makes a really compelling case for how the skills you hone around a gaming table those can turn into some serious assets in UX design. Yeah, what I found really interesting is like Hobson doesn't just draw those vague parallels, you know, like, oh, both involve creativity or whatever. He gets specific. He breaks down those skills that are essential for dungeon masters and UX researchers. Okay, I'm intrigued. Give me an example. Yeah. What's one skill that sounds like it belongs in a fantasy world, but actually translates to UX? Okay, let's talk about active listening. We all know it's important, right? Mm. But as Hobson points out, it's so much more than just hearing the words. Think about a dungeon master in the middle of a game. They're not just passively listening to what their players are saying. They're picking up on tone, pauses, mm -hmm. maybe even a raised eyebrow or uh, like a mischievous grin. Oh, so they're like reading between the lines of the story. Exactly. It's all about understanding the nuances, the subtext. And Hobson argues that this translates directly to user interviews in UX research. Think about it. You're observing how users interact with the product. Right. Right. But the real treasure, the real gold, is uncovering those unspoken frustrations. Maybe they hesitate to click a certain button or their mouse kind of hovers over a menu for a beat too long. It's like being a detective. Except instead of solving a crime, you're solving for those user pain points. I love that analogy. And it actually leads perfectly into another skill. Hobson highlights open communication. So a good dungeon master doesn't just say, you enter the tavern. They paint a picture with their words. Nice. The smell of ale and the boisterous laughter, the flickering candlelight. It's about crafting a truly immersive experience for the players through those vivid descriptions. Okay, so how does that translate to a UX researcher hunched over their data? It's about presentation. It's about taking those research findings and presenting them in a way that truly resonates with your audience because UX researchers can't just like bombard developers with raw data and expect them to grasp the implications. Right. They need to communicate those insights in a way that's clear, engaging, even compelling. So they need to become storytellers. They're weaving a narrative with the data points. Absolutely. Hobson even uses this great term. He calls it narrative oracle to describe how those strong communication skills can help UX researchers guide decision making. It's about bringing that data to life, showing the why behind it and making those insights actionable. Okay, this is where things are starting to click for me. So we've got active listening, we've got open communication, but surely there's more to this unexpected connection, right? What other hidden gems does Hobson unearth? Well, Hobson argues that adaptability is another essential skill for both dungeon masters and UX researchers. Okay, now that's something I can get behind. Anyone who's spent any time around a gaming table knows that players can throw some serious curveballs your way. Precisely. A good dungeon master might spend hours, you know, crafting this really detailed plot line only to have their players decide to befriend the dragon they were supposed to slay or like stage a mutiny on the airship. And just like that, the meticulously planned campaign takes an unexpected detour. Exactly. But here's the thing. A skilled dungeon master doesn't panic in these situations. They adapt. They weave those unexpected turns into the narrative. And sometimes they even create a more compelling story as a result. So how does this whole adapt-on-the-fly approach translate to the world of UX research? Well, user research rarely goes exactly according to plan. Either users might interact with a product in ways that you didn't anticipate, or reveal needs that you hadn't even considered. So a UX researcher who can adjust their research methods, design solutions, or even like their entire approach based on this real-time feedback, that's invaluable. It's fascinating how this ties back to our earlier point about active listening. It's not just about gathering information. It's about being receptive to it and being willing to let it shape your course. Absolutely. And this leads us to another skill that Hobson emphasizes, emotional intelligence. No, that's an interesting one. It's not something we typically associate with technical fields like UX. You're right. But Hobson makes a compelling argument for why it's crucial. Yeah. Imagine a dungeon master observing their players during a really tense moment. They're not just watching dice rolls. They're reading the room. Mm -hmm. Are players getting frustrated? Are they bored? Maybe a little too competitive. So it's about recognizing those emotional undercurrents 
and adapting your approach to make sure everyone stays engaged. Exactly. And this translates beautifully to UX research. A skilled researcher can sense when a user is struggling to articulate their thoughts or pick up on nonverbal cues that suggest confusion or frustration, and then create a safe and supportive environment for honest feedback. It's about fostering empathy and building rapport, even in the midst of testing and gathering data. Precisely. And this brings us to one final skill that Hobson highlights. Improvisation. Now, we've already touched on adaptability, but improvisation feels like it takes things a step further. It's about thinking on your feet, right? Exactly. Picture this. You're a dungeon master, and one of your players decides to try and befriend the villain instead of fighting them. Oh, God. You hadn't planned for this, but you can't just say no, right? You need to improvise a believable and engaging response on the spot. It's like those improv comedy shows where the actors have to come up with scenes and dialogue on the fly. Exactly. And Hobson argues that this ability to improvise is equally valuable in UX research. User interviews can take those unexpected turns, and a researcher who can think on their feet and adapt their questions or tasks based on what unfolds can gather incredibly valuable insights. So improvisation in UX research is about being present, attentive, and ready to deviate from the script when the situation calls for it. Exactly. It's about embracing those unscripted moments and using them as opportunities to learn something new about your users. So far, we've covered a lot of ground, from active listening and open communication to adaptability, emotional intelligence, and even improvisation. It's incredible how these seemingly disparate skills intertwine in both the world of tabletop gaming and UX design. It's a testament to the power of transferable skills. What might seem like a niche hobby can actually be a training ground for a fulfilling and impactful career. This has me thinking, are there any other unexpected connections that Hobson highlights in his article? He delves deeper into the nuances of these shared skills, exploring how they manifest in specific scenarios. I'm all ears. Give me an example of how one of these skills might play out differently in a TTRPG setting versus a UX research environment. Let's consider open communication again, but this time through the lens of motivation. A dungeon master who understands what drives their players can tailor the game to their interests, creating a more engaging experience for everyone. So if the players are motivated by exploration, the dungeon master might design a campaign filled with uncharted territories and hidden treasures. But if the players are more drawn to social interaction and intrigue, the campaign might revolve around courtly politics and shadowy conspiracies. Precisely. And this principle of understanding motivation is equally crucial in UX design. A UX researcher who grasps the why behind user behavior can create products that truly resonate with their target audience. It's about identifying the underlying needs and desires that drive people to use a product or service in the first place. Are they looking for efficiency, entertainment, connection, or something else entirely? Exactly. And just like a dungeon master tailors their campaign to their players' motivations, a UX designer can use this understanding to craft experiences that are not only functional, but also deeply satisfying and engaging for users. This is making me rethink my entire approach to both gaming and, dare I say, my work. Hobson also talks about the importance of choice and consequence in both fields, right? He does. And it's a fascinating concept that adds a layer of depth and engagement to both tabletop gaming and UX design. So in a TTRPG, it's about giving players meaningful choices that have a tangible impact on the game world. If they choose to steal a powerful artifact, for example, it might give them an advantage in battle, yeah. but it could also anger a powerful wizard or attract unwanted attention from bounty hunters. Exactly. And in UX design, it's about giving users a sense of agency by ensuring their choices have meaningful consequences within the digital landscape. So, for example, if you're designing a language learning app, you wouldn't want to force users down a single rigid path. You'd want to give them choices about what they learn, how they learn it, and how they track their progress. Precisely. Because that sense of choice and control can make the learning process more engaging and rewarding. And Hobson also touches on the importance of feedback loops in both TTRPGs and UX. Oh, interesting. So in a TTRPG, a good dungeon master is constantly providing feedback to their players. Right. Letting them know how their actions are affecting the game world. Right. Offering suggestions and generally keeping them engaged. Exactly. And in UX, feedback loops are crucial for creating user-centered designs. You're constantly gathering feedback from users, whether it's through usability testing surveys or analytics, and then using that feedback to improve the product. It's a continuous cycle of iteration and improvement, all driven by user feedback. This is making me wonder, what happens when a GM or UX researcher isn't adaptable? 
it can lead to some frustrating experiences. In a TTRPG, players might feel railroaded if the GM is too rigid, unable to deviate from their pre-planned storyline. They might start to disengage or feel like their choices don't matter. And in UX research. I think you'd see a similar lack of engagement, maybe even some frustration from users. If you're not adapting your research or design based on their feedback, you're essentially saying, we know better than you, which is never a good look. It can lead to products that miss the mark because they're not truly meeting users' needs. That makes a lot of sense. Wow, this is really making me see those parallels between crafting an engaging campaign and designing a user-friendly product. It's amazing how these insights can shift our perspective, isn't it? And Hobson doesn't stop there. Oh, there's more. What other insights does he offer? Well, he leaves us with a really thought-provoking question. He asks, what other seemingly unrelated hobbies or interests might you have that could surprisingly translate into valuable UX skills? That's such a great question. It makes you realize that our passions and hobbies aren't just leisurely pursuits. They can be incredible sources of valuable skills. Exactly. Think about it. Maybe you love gardening. That passion for nurturing plants could translate into a deep understanding of user journeys and how to cultivate engagement over time. Or maybe you're a whiz at strategy games. That ability to anticipate your opponent's move could make you incredibly adept at designing intuitive user flows anticipating pain points and creating those seamless experiences. Precisely. It's about recognizing those hidden connections between our interests and the skills they foster. Your love of photography could give you a keen eye for visual hierarchy and composition, while your passion for knitting might make you a master of patterns and user flows. Like Hobson is encouraging us to view our passions as secret weapons, hitting superpowers that we can leverage in our professional lives. Absolutely. And that's a truly empowering message for anyone, regardless of their profession. You never know what seemingly unrelated skill might give you an unexpected edge in UX design or any field for that matter. This deep dive has been a real eye opener. We've explored the unexpected connections between dungeon mastering and UX design uncovering a treasure trove of transferable skills along the way. It just goes to show that sometimes the most valuable insights come from the most unexpected places. So as we wrap up this deep dive, I think the takeaway for our listeners is this. Embrace your passions, explore your curiosities, and never underestimate the power of seemingly unrelated experiences. Beautifully said. And who knows? Maybe the skills you hone during your next game night could be the key to unlocking your dream career in UX design or even inspire you to create something truly extraordinary. And on that note, we'll leave you to ponder those possibilities. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep diving deep.